What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today is a very special one because we're training with number two bodybuilder in the entire world, William Bonac. For those of you who do not know, William is from the Netherlands as well, just like me. And this is the second time I've been training with him. Last time was in my off season. It uh, was a back workout. It's also on the channel. And this time it's a chest workout. And this time we're both in the prep for the Mr. Olympia, which is very awesome for sure. And throughout this entire workout, William is giving me cues, which I will tell you all about. Just like the flies that I just did, we did those just to warm up the muscle before starting heavy compounds like this incline bench press. And what he was telling me is that my front delts were overpowering my chest movements. Uh, for example, in the first exercise, the fly, my front delts, when I was contracting the chest, were too much in front of my body, not allowing for the chest to be isolated enough and the front delts would then also be contracted. And that is what you want to avoid as much as possible. So having said that, when you see William Bonag doing, for example, this uh, incline bench press, you may think, well, why isn't he going all the way up? I'll be explaining that more in just a second, but the reasoning for that is because if you want to contract the chest without the front delts, if you would then extend the arms all the way up, you wouldn't be able to do so without contracting the front delts. And if you want to isolate only the chest as much as possible, which will reduce injury, which will make the exercise more effective for the muscle itself. You want to you know, limit the range of motion to only having the muscle being worked and not other muscles around it. You notice that if you retract your shoulder blades and have a, a shorter grip, so not a very wide grip, that you can't really push all the way out because then you would use your front delts to push out. So that's why the range of motion at the top is shortened to make sure that only the chest is working and not the front delts. Make sure you have contraction on your chest, on your chest as well. Yes. Instead of on your shoulders. Exactly. So William, uh, strength is quite impressive for sure because he's still easily pressing quite some heavy weights in this chest workout and personally i think i'm quite a strong uh, uh, chest person like strong on the bench press on the incline bench press but when i implement his exact technique really focusing on that chest and not just on pushing the weight upwards because you know even though i've been doing this for many years you still think about the weight you've been doing all of these years and you simply don't want to do less so sometimes that would recruit other muscles especially when chest is a strong point anyway you might think well i'm not doing anything wrong but when someone like william is telling you something when he he is giving you advice, you better listen. He is not number two in the world for no reason. So throughout this entire workout, I am simply uh, following his exercises, his exercise order, and I'm here to learn and to, of course, have fun with a very kind person that is William. So on most exercises today, we're doing four real sets. Now, normally I would do some warm-ups, which would be uh, less reps and less weight, and then do one or two working sets. William trains with more straight sets, so more volume, more overall sets that go to failure, more difficult sets, as you can see right here. Even though he's already done some difficult sets already, he is still going heavier and heavier and more intense. That just shows you how refined William's physique and muscularity is to be able to take this beating, even though he's about seven weeks out from the Olympia here, he's still able to push those weights with that amount of volume. It's that combination that makes it impressive. I know a lot of bodybuilders who lift heavy weights without the volume or simply do a lot of volume without the heavy weights. Being able to do both, that's what gives you an enormous physique, which obviously happened to William Bonek, as you can see in this video. 
Push, push. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Yes. Oh, yes. So after the incline bench press, we're then doing the flat bench press. And this is the first set William is doing, three plates right from the get-go. So he does realize that he's already warmed up from doing the flies first, then the incline bench press. So when doing the bench press, he already feels like his chest is warmed up enough to do that weight. Now this for me is two plates. That normally would be a weight I would do when I do the bench press, uh, at least for a, th a second or a third exercise in the workout. Then I would also start with a heavier bench press than if I would be doing it as the first exercise because then I would only be using half a plate aside to begin because the bench press is one of the most injury prone chest movements that you can do. So the Bench press and the incline bench press are both old school uh, exercises. And William does two different chest workouts. One workout is with dumbbells and the other workout is with barbells, as you can see right here. So that is, you know, quite an old school style of training with free weights. We're also going to combine this with machines later on, but just to see that he's starting out with the free weights, which he also did during the back workout is quite refreshing to see that just proves that working with free weights builds a world-class physique, as you can see right here. I'm also showing you most of the sets that were being done so they can actually see, you know, how long or how voluminous a workout with William would be because you never really see, you know, complete videos of a true IVB pro like William, like a top six Olympia competitor. And of course, William is top two, which is very uh, rare to see indeed. But it's very interesting to see how long a workout is, how intense it is, how much volume there is at this point in the prep. So I'm showing you most sets of the entire workout so you get a very good idea of what is going on in the chest and tricep workout. And Kane, my brother, who is one and a half years younger than me, but pretty much as strong as me, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I train, he always keeps up in strength, which is quite amazing. He was working out with us as well, which is uh, very cool to have, you know, me and him as two brothers training with William at the same time. So that was a really nice and amazing experience. So after having done the heaviest set on the bench press, we're then doing one lighter set to be able to really get into those uh, packs to do a little more reps. And it really depends on the set you did before, because if the set was still easy enough, for example, if you were still able to hit eight or 10 reps, you would still be able to do another set that was a little heavier because behind you is always going to be a spotter who helps you get that last push on every single rep, which is also called forced reps, which is what's happening right here. The most important part of any chest movement or any bodybuilding movement in general is the negative portion of the rep. So as long as you're able to hit that in a control fashion and then having someone help you on the positive rep that will also help you build muscle in a tremendous way as long as you keep using full range of motion and mind muscle connection and don't use weights that are far too heavy the next one is a decline movement and pretty much the only reason we're doing it in a machine is because we didn't use a free weight uh, bench. I think it was occupied, but regardless of that, we're hitting three different angles on the chest, which is what bodybuilding is all about. Right, so this is a great decline bench press machine. So it is a machine, so you might think, well, it's not free weight but it's two separate handles that actually move separately and individually. So you can actually notice if one side of the chest is weaker than the other, and you can perfectly, you know, lie in it so that it aligns with the lower chest, which is the decline chest press is meant for. So it's an amazing exercise. 
So as I mentioned, bodybuilding is all about hitting the muscle from as many angles as you can. Of course, taking into account that every single exercise that you are doing, you're actually feeling in the muscle that you're training. So that's why you have different options. For example, for this decline motion, you can do a decline uh, chest press. You can do this machine, this decline, uh, you know, free weight uh, individually handled machine as well or a decline bench press decline double press whatever the case may be but hitting the incline the flat and then the decline is a perfect way to not miss any muscle fiber in that chest region and that's how i've always trained myself no matter what muscle group it is hitting it from as many angles as possible to create the most developed look you can and this exercise was really really heavy by the way i know william makes it look quite easy but here i had to do a drop set because it was simply too much weight and what you don't want to do when you're about seven weeks out is force yourself just to do the weight just because William is watching that's not a mistake I wanted to make so when you simply can't lift the weight you can't lift the weight don't worry about that because you only have one physique and one chance of being the best that you can be and then the next one is just a chest machine so it's the first true machine that we're using with a stack weight and of course William is using the entire stack not just on a regular set but on a drop set or not even a drop set a super set rather so first he's doing a regular chest press and then he's doing the hammer grip chest press which you've seen me do a couple of times on this channel as well one of my favorite superset movements but trust me as the fourth and pretty much the fifth exercise of the day and doing that superset that is truly difficult to do so <laughs> if you try this work out yourself you will notice that this chest press even though it feels very light if you'll be doing it at the beginning of the workout now feels incredibly heavy especially this hammer grip version to me it always felt like twice as heavy compared to the regular chest press because here you simply have less leverage and it's more difficult uh, to get a full contraction in the chest. You can't really cheat. It's difficult uh, to use anything else but the chest if you really get your mind into the chest muscle. So what I was doing and what William was saying as well is to keep my elbows as close to my side as possible and to really keep my shoulder blades retracted. And that allows you to only use the chest and not the front delts as little as the triceps as possible. You can see it here with William as well. Just look at his chest bulging beneath his tank top when he's contracting his chest right here when he's doing this movement if you look at his front delts they're not doing nearly as much as his chest and for a lot of people the front delts are also doing a lot of effort because they simply uh, try to squeeze the chest so hard that their front delts or entire shoulders will roll forward and then the front delts will do the work so that is the primary reason that you don't see william stretch his arm all the way out because then the chest would not be contracted any more any further is just would be taken over by the front delts and the triceps so that's why not only william but a lot of other pro bodybuilders who actually really feel that mind muscle connection you don't see them use quote unquote full range of motion because to them they're already using full range of motion for that muscle in particular i still recommend a lot of people especially beginners to simply use the entirety of the motion they can but keep in mind that you really only want to feel anything in the muscle that you're working at that time so for example if i would be doing this chest press and i would extend my arms all the way forward and it would shift from my chest to my front delts i would know that even though it would technically be a longer range of motion it would not serve my chest growth anything because the front delts would then take over the movement that's something you always have to keep in mind because we are bodybuilders we want to build our body during these exercises so build a 
particular muscle group and not just move the weight from A to B and just let any muscle that happens to work uh, you know, do the effort because we only want the effort to come from the muscle that we're working and not the entire chain of muscles which would make it more efficient and more easy and more effective for the body itself because we don't want to make it efficient for the body we want to make it as difficult as possible because the more difficult it is the more signaling your body will do to make the muscle grow and that is the purpose of a workout and after doing all the chest movements we are then doing some triceps and it's actually a tricep circuit so it's comparable to when I was training biceps with William after doing back he's not just doing one bicep movement or one tricep movement finishing off that exercise and then move to the next no it's two rounds and it's of four exercises so first you do two sets of a tricep push down when you've done those and they are pretty much the failure you then move to exercise number two do two sets on there exercise number three do, do two sets on there and then exercise number four two sets again and that's one round then the second round you simply repeat what you've done and every single set will then still be pretty much to failure at least it should be very difficult to complete so here you can see Kane me and William doing three different exercises we will be rotating uh, uh, around these exercises to be able to complete the round and one other exercise you will see in just a minute is the overhead tricep extension which we'll be doing in a machine which targets the long head so what we're doing is two basic tricep pushdowns one with a straight bar and the other with a tyron grip which is an ergonomic grip for your fingers which we actually have in our gym uh, ourselves and a rope push down to be able to you know squeeze the uh, triceps in a different way to target the small head of the triceps so at the bottom what you want to do is not keep your hands together but actually spread your hands apart so you can actually contract that uh, small head the best way possible and that is a big difference between the regular uh, tricep push down because then you can't do anything with your hands at all the only thing you can do is push the weight down and not put any emphasis on any part of the triceps but in conclusion these tricep exercises these two rounds of four different exercises is to target each and every head of the triceps and get as good as a pump as possible so when you've done chest you've already done a lot of uh, pressing movements automatically targeting the medial head of the triceps quite a lot all the other heads as well but the medial head the most and then when you're doing the triceps after those chest movements all you're doing is finishing off those triceps and the best way to do so if you want to make the chest a priority of the workout is not to pick exercises like three or four exercises again because then the workout will be far too long it's to pick exercises that give you a great pump in the tricep for metabolic damage instead of mechanical tension failure so you really want to get a pump get lactic acid build up and grow your muscles that way so when you have an arm day you can actually go to mechanical failure on the tricep movements like a french press or a heavy close grip bench press for example heavier compounds and all of these presses and machine movements that we're doing right here to create the maximum amount of blood flow in the triceps that we can What William also told me is that when I posted this very picture on Instagram is that he noticed that my side delts could use a little work because we all know the side delts can never be big enough. So he actually told me to do this machine and do a lot of volume on this machine not go heavy weights just pick pretty much the lightest weight and do as many reps as you possibly can until you hit failure getting as much blood in that muscle as possible that happens to be exactly what I like to do for the side delts anyway so I'm really happy that he is making his own side delts grow like that as well but he did mention that he 
combines this with heavier side lateral raises, but then partial range of motion. So you don't force your traps to do the work at the very top. So this is a great way to pump up those side delts and then do heavy side lateral raises again to put some mechanical tension on there. So you hit them from both angles in both ways so after the workout of course we had a very nice pump i really like the workout i think we were uh, working out for about one hour and 45 minutes uh, in total we worked up with four people so in my opinion that's quite a nice time to work out in and it was just an amazing workout and i just hope you guys enjoyed it as well and uh you know it was just an honor to train with william bonek the conqueror anyway guys i want to thank you for watching and trust me a lot more footage just like this is coming to the vintage genetics channel and don't forget to stay golden